This is the best AI vision tool I've found on the Asset Store, and it does a lot more than just vision. I'm gonna show you how to get this thing up and running in minutes without writing any code whatsoever. So I have a pretty simple setup here. If you just look around the scene, all we have is our environment. So I have the floor, I also have this little room right here, and then I have the NPC right here. Uh, real basic setup, and I got the player here and the player again. This is just a capsule with a camera on it. What I'm here to show you is how easy it is to set the sensor toolkit stuff. So I'm gonna take my NPC here, and I have this FSM on them, just an NPC FSM. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have an animator play, you know, it's gonna be, uh, we'll add that component to it, and it'll play idle, right? So we want it to be playing the idle. I just have, I'll have this animator component on it. I'm gonna drag and drop that in there. We'll have a bool test in here. And we'll have the bool test check for a new variable called can see player, right? And if it's true, we'll have it go, actually let's just send for true, okay? And that'll go to the next state. So we'll call this one idle, and we'll call this state follow. I'm gonna be checking every frame right here for the bool test. And for follow, we'll have, I'm just gonna copy and paste this animator play in there, All right? Except this one will be walk. Once that's there, I'm gonna get in a get distance. Right, and it'll get the distance um, from the owner to call this the player. And we'll store the result in a new variable called distance to player. Okay, and that's every frame. Um, and then what we'll have is a flipped compare, and it'll be comparing that distance to player to, let's do something like, we'll put 1.5, and if it's less than, We'll send a new event called next. Okay, and this is also checked for every frame. So, so we're getting the distance between the NPC and the player, and then we're watching that distance, and if it's ever below 1.5, then we go on to the next thing. Okay, so that's this, which will be, we'll call this one close enough. Again, I'm just setting up something really simple so you can see how the sensor toolkit stuff works. All right, and in here, we'll just put a wait action. And we'll do uh, a smooth look at all right, and then it's just, we'll have the NPC always looking at the player, and we'll have them look at him for like five seconds. Okay, and then once that's done, it'll just go back to here. So it's idle, then they start following, and then once they're close enough, they just look at our player, and then after a few seconds, they go back to their idle state. Now, where sensor toolkit comes in is on this idle state, the can see player part. So we want to figure out how we can set up the site for this NPC. Well, in the NPC, we open up the rig. Under spine, you have head, right? So I have this head joint selected. So we're going to add a component, and we're going to have a trigger sensor, and then we're going to have a field of view collider, this FOV collider. This is our field of view collider. You see this, this big green bounding box right here in the gizmos, it even extends below the floor. In this field of view collider script, this component over here, you can change the length of it, you can change the base size of it, and you can change the angle, right? Range, it's like how far the peripherals, right? So this field of view angle, like that. You know, you could set that elevation angle higher and lower if you want. Uh, and then the resolution, this will change how many polys this has, like how complex the geometry is for the field of view collider. So you can see now with more resolution, it's added more faces. We don't really need that much. So I'm actually gonna put this all the way down to zero, right? We could just use something really, really standard. Okay, so this is what the field of view will look like for our NPC. Now we have this trigger sensor script, right? So this trigger sensor script, this is the thing that kind of lets us decide like which type of things our field of view collider is gonna be interacting with, which type of things trigger it, which type of things it can like detect and all that good stuff. So, but we should enable a tag filter, okay? And we'll set this to one tag. So the one tag we want, we'll set it to player. Right now, since I'm using a character controller, I'll actually use this little cube at the front right here because this has a, a collider on it. And I'll tag this as player. Okay, so this is a part of my player and it's tagged as player. So if this little cube ever enters 
uh, the field of view of this NPC, that will count as seeing the player. But now we're gonna add in an FSM. So on this FSM, we'll call this our NPC field of view, FOV, right? Let's edit this one. So down here in your actions browser, you'll see that you have a new category right here, sensors. So you can click on sensors and in sensors, you have all these actions that'll help you control the stuff that comes with sensor toolkit. So the action that I'm gonna use is this sensor is detected action. Down here in the tooltip, it says query a sensor if it currently detects a specific game object. So we wanna check if this can see the player. We can use this to store a new variable. We'll call this player variables. And in here, we could drag and drop our cube. Uh, all right, so now with that set up, we could store the result, that is whether or not it is detected in a new variable called can see player. Okay, this is gonna be running every frame and we're gonna have a set FSM bool. And what we'll set is taking our NPC, putting it in here. Remember NPC in this FSM, we have the can see player bool. And what we're gonna set it with is the value that is received here. So we're gonna set it with our own can see player and that's gonna be checked every frame, right? So this sensor is constantly detecting whether or not we can see the player by looking for that little cube. And if we can, it stores it in that variable can see player. If it can't, it also stores that. It's a true or false statement. And it's sending it back to our root of the NPC, this NPC part, which here is constantly running a bool test. So it's just constantly checking, hey, can it, can it see the player? Okay, so what I'll do is, I think we're currently in view. So I'm actually gonna move the player a little further away. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, set agent destination as game object. And I'm gonna put da, 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 this nav mesh agent component. And the destination will be uh, the player. Now, I'll just drag and drop the player in here. In the head component, over here it says, in order to detect game objects without rigid bodies, the trigger sensor must itself have a rigid body. So to our sensor, I'm going to add a rigid body component. And then for this rigid body, I'm not gonna use gravity and I'm gonna set to is kinematic. And that way it doesn't fall through the floor and it can actually be moved around with the animation of the head. Okay, now there's combinations of using rigid bodies or colliders that you can use. So it's kind of like, you don't necessarily have to have a rigid body on here, but the things that you're detecting would have to have a rigid body. So the combination of how you wanna use these types of components is up to you. All right, so with our NPC selected to take a look at their FSM, we can keep an eye on this and hit play. Okay, so as you can see, the player is out of range, but as soon as we go inside, oh, he starts following us, right? You can see us, we are within his view. So the thing about this guy is right now, he could see us through walls and he's just gonna chase us around this thing constantly because right now his field of view collider isn't set up to ignore or be blocked by these walls. So he just keeps chasing us, right? So we can fix that by going over to his collider and over here we can check this line of sight. And for whatever blocks the line of sight, we want it to set it to whatever is a wall or something that is physical in the world, things that we do wanna have block the line of sight. So. For this example, what I could do is come over to layers. I'm gonna add a new layer and let's just add a layer called environment, right? So this is walls, this is trees, cars, anything that's like that can get in the way and block the line of sight. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these walls and I'm gonna put them all on that environment layer. And then for our field of view, the things that blocks line of sight, I'm gonna set this to environment. Okay, so now select our NPC and let's see how this works out. Okay, so he can see us, starts following us, but I'm gonna go ahead and hide. And now we are close enough for him to see us, right? You could take a look over here. Let me see, where's my mouse? You could take a look right here. We're in his field of view, but the thing is we're obstructed by this wall because what's happening is there's a ray cast that's being drawn between the base of the field of view and me. And if there's anything that gets in the way, then that counts as he can't see me. But 
if I pop out from behind the wall or, you know, if I go like, like right here, he can see me now, right? And then he starts following me. But yeah, that's the basic setup of how you get the sensor toolkit stuff working with, uh, with these actions. Now, of course, this is a really, really simple way of using all these things. In fact, even in my games, I have a much more complicated way of using these because there's all sorts of different things that you want to consider. But this is a testament to how simple it is to set up. And trust me, like you could do a lot more and really push it even further with the rest of those actions and all the other sort of options and the components for the field of view collider and different sensors. Okay, so I want to expose a little kink in his system. So it's like, if I go over to this close enough part and I get rid of the smooth look at so he doesn't keep looking at us, and I hit play, he'll follow me, right? And let's have him like stop like right here, right? So he reached us and now I can come over here and when he's ready to loop back around and start looking for us, you know, if he's not keeping an eye on you, he doesn't know where you are and like, it's just, we can sneak up behind him and look at, he's just, he's totally dumb. He's just sitting here and like, we're like right behind him. So, you know, if the player's sneaking around, he should be able to like hear you, you know, and he should be able to catch you that way. And that's pretty easy to set up too. Okay, but before we do that, I want to tell you that I'm working on some full-fledged game dev courses for Playmaker users. And when I release the courses, I'm going to be giving out some super fat early bird discounts. So if you want those early bird coupons, be sure to sign up to the email list in the description. Alright, so the way we want to do the hearing is... We'll just have a sensor on the NPC base itself. This one is not tied to sight, right? This is just tied to the core of the NPC. So there's a few different types of sensors that you could use with the sensor toolkit. We just use the field of view collider and the trigger sensor. So this is the sensor toolkit manual, super simple to navigate through. And over here in the side, we have the sensors list. So this time we're gonna wanna use this range sensor. So that's what we're gonna add to this. Add component, range sensor. Okay, and you'll see this got added. This is a big old blue sphere. Now, I'm gonna make this sphere a little bit smaller, like that. He can only hear us if we're walking around within that distance. Okay, so enable tag filter, and we're gonna kinda do the same thing. So the t filter that we wanna be able to hear is player. And this time we're not gonna set up an ignore list because he should be able to hear us around the corner of something, right? The walls shouldn't necessarily block this out. They could dampen it, and there's really interesting and kind of crazy ways to set that up too, but that's a little complex for now. So let's just focus on the simple version of sound and hearing with these NPCs. The layer that we wanna detect it on, we'll set it to default. We'll actually turn him around, right? So he's not facing us, so we could sneak up on him. I'm gonna throw in this sensor is detected and the game object we'll check for is a new variable called just player and then we'll store the result in a new variable called player detected. This is gonna go every frame and then what we wanna do is a git fsm bool and the game object we're gonna be getting this bool from will be the player and the fsm name we'll skip that for now but the variable name is we'll say making noise let's call it is making noise okay we'll store that in a value is making noise check every frame and then we'll do a bool all true and it'll be two bool values the first one will be player detected and the second one will be is making noise so what it's going to do is it's going to check is the player detected, right? Is the player within that sphere? Is the little box, the cube thing that represents our player in that sphere's range? And then the second thing it checks is like, and we haven't set this up yet, I'll set this up in just a moment, is, is that little cube making noise? Okay, so, so if both of these things are true, then it will store the result, can hear player. Okay, and this is gonna go every frame as well. Now, over in our little cube, have a new FSM on this little cube, and we'll just call this Noisemaker. In here, what we'll do, uh, we'll do a git key down, and the key will be, uh, let's set it to the Z key, okay? And we're just gonna send an event, a uh, new event, next, okay? So when we hit the Z key, I'll say this first state is quiet, and the second state is noisy, Okay, and then in our noisy state, we're gonna do a set bool value. New variable. Um, what did I call it? Is making noise, okay, I'm gonna copy that. All right, in our little cube, the new variable is called is making noise, and we're gonna set the bool value to true, 
and then I'll do a get key up. Okay, so when we let go of the key, Z, send it new event back. Okay, and that'll go back here. So as long as we're holding down the Z key, that's us like making noise. Um, but we're also gonna copy and paste this set bool value in the quiet state. And up here, we're gonna say that it's set to false. Okay, so as long as we're here, it's gonna be false for the is making noise bool. All right, so if I hit play, let's just make sure this works, right? So if I hit Z, goes to noisy, let go of Z, goes to quiet, great. I'm gonna select our NPC. We'll have it send the event if he can hear us, right? So if, it's, if all those things are true, we'll have this uh, send next, okay? And we'll call this first state uh, can't hear player. And the second state can hear player. Okay, and then we'll just do a, a smooth look at, and he'll look at the player. And then we'll do a wait, and he'll wait after three seconds. Uh, we'll send it back. Okay, and it'll go back here. So that way we can like sneak around him. Sorry, we'll have it go to another state where he'll wait again just for a couple seconds, and then then we'll have it go back. That way we get a little window to kind of duck and dodge from him. Okay, let's call that state wait. Hit play, should be able to walk up behind him and nothing's happening, right? See how we're totally in his little bubble. I'm gonna zoom in over here. Totally in his little bubble, right? Out of his bubble, in his bubble. Nothing's happening though, it says can't hear player. But if we hit Z, Okay, sorry, the reason it isn't working because I didn't specify the player. We need to go to variables really quick, and in player, I'm just gonna drag in this little cube. Okay, now let's watch. So I'm in his little thing, in his little bubble. So now I'm in his little bubble. If I hit Z, spots us. Cool. Now we can hide behind him. Alright, so we're behind him again. And again, if I hit Z, he hears us. That's us making noise. So even behind walls, right? He can't see us in there. But, if I go right here, and I make a noise, he heard me. But he's not going over to me, because he can't see me. But now he's looking this way. So now, if I come out from behind this corner, he can see me, and he goes to me. And there you fucking go. Uh, and that's how you can set up a really awesome and easy vision and hearing system with your AI. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Hope you see how dope Sensor Toolkit is. It's like really, really easy, really, really powerful. Um, the icing on the cake is being able to use it with Playmaker. So definitely go check out Sensor Toolkit. I think like right now it's on sale for $10. We'll see. I don't know when this video comes out, but I think it's like for 10 bucks right now. Playmaker's actually discounted right now. Also, big thing is like, I'm not sponsored by these people. Sensor Toolkit did not ask me to do this. And of course, you know, Playmaker doesn't ask me to do these things like, they found me after the fact, right? So I just love these things. So I'm telling you, like really, it's a great set of tools to add to your arsenal. And by the way, I have links to those assets in the description that if you use those links to go buy them, helps me out, helps the channel out, makes it a little easier to keep things coming, makes it a little easier to keep the channel active. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the mailing list because those courses are gonna come out soon. And you know, the early bird discounts. They're gonna be, you're gonna want that early bird discount, man. And I'm not gonna spam you with a bunch of bullshit. So just, just, just hit up that, hit up that mailing list.